digression. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not having it. I mean, is it food we're talking about? Definitely. It's very ah, juicy. Come on. But I'm just stating facts. What were we talking about? What's up, guys? Salut. My name is Alex, and I make food videos on YouTube. Hello, guys. My name is Josh. Uh, I'm a video editor. I work with Alex on YouTube. I provide uh, emotional and uh, physical support for him, and uh, also co-host this podcast with him. Amazing, amazing man. How are you? Good morning. I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Feeling caffeinated? I'm halfway there, so I'm currently halfway down my coffee. That first half's going to kick in in around 10 minutes, I would say. So listen <laughs> out for that, and uh, we'll see if I get more excited about things. Good, good man. Uh, I've, got, I've got a story uh, for us to discuss about this morning. So, okay. Something something a bit... Uh, a heated conversation oh okay you see what i did there <laughs> guy's a comedian now <laughs> exactly beware comedians i'm coming up for you okay. anyway so uh, i want to talk about chilies as you may be aware of <laughs> probably because of the the hints and this the, the the subtle accent that i've got i grew up in france no where yeah really? i mean you thought you thought for a moment that i was coming from liverpool listen i'm not the only person that thinks that you're putting this accent on i've seen comments on the videos before of people saying he's not really french that's, that's he's putting that on that's amazing that, that's amazing we, it mean it means it's truly genuine anyway so i grew up in france i grew up in france where chilies are just frowned upon why are they frowned upon that, that's that's a question I don't have the answer to. Okay. okay? But if you, if you take any dish, if you, let's say you're in a restaurant with your friends and you're having a dish, a French dish especially, if there's any hint of heat, people will just go like, ugh, what is that? It's just like, this is overwhelming. Where am I? I'm lost. But I'm just, I've, I, I, so I grew up with that, with the absence of chili. It's just like there is one chili that is barely acceptable. It comes from the southwest of France. It's called Piment d'Espelette. So Espelette chili. Okay. But it's just like it's, it's an anecdote in French cuisine, which is a very weird thing when you think of it. Because we are surrounded in France with countries that accept chilies very much. Think of Spain, uh -huh. Italy, obviously Great Britain, Germany... Possibly, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. The, the, at, in, at the end of the day, chilies are just out. out they're, they're just uh, foreign to French cuisine. I think it's a shame, but I wasn't aware of that until I discovered that uh, uh, all the other countries basically had a love for chili. Mm. So... Do you uh, think... Uh, uh, yeah. is, is it like... Well, let me ask this then. You must have other cuisines that uh, are very pop that aren't French cuisine that are popular in France that have a bit a big uh, uh, chili is a key role in in those cuisines. So, so yes, we have Northern African cuisine, for example, a Moroccan. So they've cuisine. got harissa paste, which is yeah, a, exactly. Chili but thing. but but it's but even though these cuisines are very popular in France, the chilies are not. The chilies so, are not... Harris Apace is just like something exotic. And I know I, I got plenty of friends who love North African cuisine and they ditch the Harris Apace. So it, it doesn't make the crossover. This is what I'm saying. That it, If people, exactly. are, people are happy to sort of go, chili is part of another cuisine. It should not be experimented with in our... Yeah. In anything that we're doing. Exactly. And the, 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 the only vague resemblance... Or vague, you know, analogy we've got with chilies, it would be mustard. What about black pepper? Black pepper is heavily used, but I don't feel it's the same thing. Hmm. I don't well, think I don't it's think the I... same addiction, the same problem that I uh, that we will discuss further afterwards. Well, I, you know what? I mean, that's worth mentioning because there are other things that can have a similar effect to chili, like, like you said, mustard. But again, I don't feel mustard's not the no. same. I like mustard, mustard. but yeah, it's yeah, like. I, yeah, I'm not, just saying it doesn't have that same. Mustard's got a real quick nasal cavity clearing, but it bosh over the head. Yeah, but it fades away too quickly. Yeah, exactly. And and it it doesn't it doesn't bring in pleasure. It doesn't have the endorphin rush. I don't think exactly. That, that it doesn't have yeah exactly the brain waves doesn't generate the same. Uh -huh. 
So, so I basically discovered uh, chilies very late, uh, like probably in, uh, around 25. So I, as I was working Hang with... Hang on. J- yeah. 25? I mean, I, I knew Harissa Paste as I was 18. I had some uh, Indian food earlier on, but I discovered not an addiction, but I discovered a bright side to heat food. To heated food, to to spicy food, in the sense of so, piquant food around twenty five. So you, I, you'd eaten you'd eaten spicy food before that. Yeah, before that, but okay. I, I saw no pleasure in that in the past. Hmm. Only even if it's just mild, I didn't understand it. I think. Okay. There, there was no. I, I was just like acknowledging the fact. Okay, so this is spicy Indian food, but I couldn't find any value in this. In so the what heat. changed? What so so I work with Jamie Oliver in the UK and and you guys in in the UK are so fan of chilies yeah that I got into it uh, just doing these back and forth between the two cities and eating in restaurant with friends and everybody was eat, eating uh, a spicy food yeah and I, and I was just trying it more and more and more and then a few discussion with 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 chefs especially in the UK really got me into it and they They've just opened my eyes on all the different types, first of all, of chilies, uh-huh. all the different varieties. Uh-huh. It, 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 so I was really ignorant when it comes to all the different types of chilies. I thought it's just heat or nothing, where in, where in fact it, there's a whole panel, a whole array of sensations mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. flavors. And, uh, and also, I, I wasn't even aware of the Scoville unit thing, the Scoville scale. Okay. So, so, so I thought it's either all in or nothing. Mm. So, so I started discovering, you know, the uh, um, what's the name of these the um, the green one, the small one, which are quite fruity and simple and quite available everywhere, especially in the US, for example. Jalapeno. The jalapeno, jalapeno, for example. The first time I had these ones, I thought, wow, feels like a heated bell pepper of some sort. That's quite fruity. It's nice. It's mild. And then I had different ones stronger ones which I didn't like back then Mm -hmm. and a milder one which I did like a bit more so that exposure to chilies and and heat and spicy food started something different in my mind I started accepting it a bit more like okay okay so so that's one thing that I can now recognize Mm -hmm. and and accept and 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 enjoy Enjoy. Uh, so I started, you know, digging for chilies. Turns out you, you can find them in France if you look for them. Where do you have pla- to go? I mean, you, you, you got to go to, for example, the Indian district in Paris. Okay. So that's north of Paris. Or, um, or basically, I'm based uh, super close to an exotic market where they've got plenty of food from the Caribbeans. Oh, now they have some very nice chilies. Uh, slightly too strong for me still to this day. Well, uh, yeah, they're, they're very hot, but they're also very flavorful. Really super, fruity, I think. S- Scotch oh, bonnets and habaneros, they're yeah, exactly, two of my yes. favorite chilies. <laughs> <laughs> so, so these are the... the, the so I, I got into it. So now I'm at a stage, so 10 years later, a bit more, where chili is part of my... Culinary journey, it's part of my uh, cooking uh, uh, routine. It's part of my eating habits, basically. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I love chilies very much. And it got slightly out of hand, I would uh-huh. say. As I was enjoying the taste of chili and discovering all oh, the flavors, all oh, the heat, this is addicting. The self-inflicting pain is some ca- some somehow a bit enjoyable. Yeah. Then I started adding chili to everything at mm-hmm. some point. More and more chilies. Because it feels like the sensors are getting dull after some time. There's a tolerance to them. There's a tolerance, yeah. So now I, ca- I can't just add a, you know, a little sprinkle of dried chili to rice. It doesn't work like this. Oh, I need getting a into dangerous full, territory. Yeah, exactly. I need a spoonful of, of Sichuan chili oil on the rice. Because I want... I, I know exactly the analogy right here. I want to experience the blast I had the first time I really experienced the chili, the chili waves. Have you, you know, saw? I, 
Yeah. Have, you, have you sought help yet? There are groups that you can go and talk <laughs> not, to. Not Chili's yet, Anonymous is a good one. Mm, I can see that becoming a reality for me at some you point. It sounds like you've got an addiction here. I think so. And, and I think it's a mild addiction, but it still, it still is an addiction. For example, I've got rice uh, in my fridge, rice leftovers. I can't see how I would eat that without any chilies on it. That would just be bland and, and flavorless. And I'm just thinking, where, where is this going in the end? Where am I going with this? I'm not saying... I just so, Sometimes I just feel that all other foods ju- are, are just becoming... Could you imagine having shrimps, prawns, without chili? I can imagine it because I've had both. Well, and yeah, also, yeah. Can you imagine, but would you eat them without? Yes. If there is chili on the table... It's all about the context. It depends what it depends what it. we're I'm in. I'm doomed. And whether I'm, doomed. I'm cursed. Whether the in a way. Now look, I, you're, first of all, yeah. your your initial uh, thing of I, I feel sorry for you that you weren't that you didn't have the exposure earlier on in your life to chili that really you know you deserved. You, you mm-hmm. haven't had that until until a later age. But that's you know that's what it is. Um. But yeah. I, I would eat prawns with and without because if you don't have them without, you stop appreciating the chili. You need that. You need you don't. If you have it with everything, then you stop appreciating when you do have it. I think. I you've think got so to, as well. You've I got to eat so some well. things without it so you can appreciate. Yeah, but but both. Uh, these are just concept. advices. Yeah, I gotta do this. I I ought to do this, but I can't now. Or here's the here's the other option that you could, that you could try. Um, chilies are not just here's the thing here's the thing we're almost viewing them too uh, too easily we're not we're not looking at the bigger picture because you can have uh, pickled chilies you can have chilli oils so like you know from uh, you can have yeah. fermented uh, chilli sauces there are lots of different types of chilies I'm, you can have fresh I'm salivating yeah. there are types of chilies that you can uh you can have dried flake chilies. You could have Smoke? smoked chilies. Oh, so yes. whether that's I like know a, you would bring chip- that up. Like a chipotle that you oh, then yes. turn into a sauce. Or the sort of European approach to smoking chilies, you've got smoked paprika. Now, obviously, oh. not all paprika is spicy. Some of it is sweet and made from yeah. a bell pepper type thing. But you know what I mean? It's still from the capsicum family. Um, there's that approach. <laughs> there's so, so hold, many hold different on. ways that you could... Ha- add chilies to a dish and here's the other thing as well it doesn't yeah. always have to be about the heat i think the heat is the addictive thing I but there's so, so many well. different chilies that have different flavor profiles you mentioned habanero you said oh wow i love the flavor profile of a habanero well, yeah i'm not gonna eat it like an apple obviously i'm not like you know i'm just well, saying i don't know i don't know at this stage i don't know anymore okay so if you i would suggest trying branching out and trying other ways of have, have having chilies i think that may but might not get rid of your addiction it will just broaden it it'll it'll give you different contexts like for example with you saying like with the habanero if you mm-hmm. take a sort of caribbean hot sauce which is yeah. usually um habanero or scotch bonnet and it's usually been fermented okay what that does is it to me at least anyway it's less vinegary than than other hot sauces and it's a lot more fruity it really brings mm. out the fruity flavors of that thing. Now, yeah, they're still absolutely red hot. They're like, oh. on t- in terms of like box, you know, like sort of standard yes. chilies, they're pretty high up on the Scoville scale before yes. you get to things that are silly, right? Mm. They're the, the, that's always the ones you've got to look out for when they're small mm-hmm. and they look kind of like a wrinkled, tiny yeah, bell pepper. The wrinkle is always If they're bad. like that, oh, man. watch out. Anyway. Exactly. So that's what the wrinkle, that's, that's, that's one approach. Something else, if you're looking at like a Sichuan um, chili oil, to yes. me that's it's almost a completely different food. It's a different sort of delivery method. Mm-hmm. Yes, they're both saucy and added as condiments, mm-hmm. but the I just feel like the flavour, the, what they're about, the intensities are, are just completely different. So I guess bro- one one answer is to broaden your horizons try more different types of chili products uh the other would be to try having some things without it so that when you do have it you've do, got more of an appreciation for it well, do you know well, what Alex, it, it, it makes sense hold, hold on a second it's, it's so, something is weird about all this when you said habanero i was both salivating and 
I was being terrified at the same time. Because I was just like, oh, I would love to bite into it. But then I thought, well, I don't have that much of a tolerance anyway. No. I'm probably going to sweat and just have tears to my eyes and a runny nose. But even that experience can be kind of, that really gets the endorphins going. You get a little bit high. When you eat yeah. a pepper that's that hot. Yeah, I know, I know. You get a little bit high. It's kind of, I mean, other than the, the pain, is it, is I it don't that, mind that. Is it, isn't that so weird? As I was mentioning, I've got, you know, uh, tears and a runny nose. I was also in, there, is, there, there was also a part of my brain activating that was just like, oh, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be nice, yeah, Alex. Yeah. Let's, Let's just do this. It's like a Pavlovian this. response oh, yeah. to hearing about the chilies. Exactly. I, I, I just feel like I've, re- I've reached a threshold where I need to make a decision. And the thing that got me into it, and we discussed that uh, a, a moment ago, so there's a program on, you, on, on Netflix called We Are The Champions. And one episode is about chilies. And it's about, it, 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 it depicts the story of a chili eating contest. Mm-hmm. You've seen this one as well. Mm-hmm. So it starts easy. And I mean, it starts easy. I think I would be dead by the first round. They already. start on something that's hotter than a habanero already. <laughs> exactly. And then they go up and up and up and 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 the contest is losing con- um, competitors as as it progresses towards the absolute apex which is like to me it's disgusting the end is disgusting because people are just inflicting themselves so much pain it's got I, us- I, I i could barely watch the end of that episode i kind of enjoyed it Oh. But uh, but I also, I got that it's got this sort of gladi- gladiatorial vibe to it. You know, there's people... people are, are crying. The crowd want to see people in pain. Yeah, right? they want to... Go on, eat that chili. And the guy Off with his head sort tears. of tears. And at some point, he's not even crying. He's not even doing anything. He's not... He feels like a zombie at some point. And he's eating chilies. Except the guy ah. who can't feel the, the pain. Yeah, but this guy, guy is an think, alien. Yeah, yeah. I think he's got no pain receptors or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. That's a different story. But the others, they're just like, they're gone. They're Look, just like dead bodies, but, you know, eating chilies. I think you'd be so disgusted by it because there's a part of you that thinks that could be me one day if I don't possibly. stop with this addiction. Poss- possibly. If, Look, w- what happens if I don't act now? Nothing. The good thing with chili is you could go as much as you want. It's never actually going to be bad for you. That's the, that's the most positive thing about it, right? As opposed to a lot of addictions, which might do you some harm. Chili addiction is actually a fine one to have. But what I would say is you might lose your... I feel like if you've got to go to that length where that's the, your only way of eating chilies, you're mm-hmm. going to lose your own enjoyment with it. That's not to say you can't go there sometimes. But I think, here's Alex, you need to be able to practice moderation let me give you an analogy that i think will work Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. french people as far as i'm aware grow up with a a table a dinner table setting whereby you can have a glass of wine with your meal from a relatively young age would you say that's true yes so your drinking culture is much more civilized than than ours i would say or the, the, the the british one in the you have a nice you have a nice yeah. glass of wine with your meal and you savor the you savor the wine almost as if it's food. Yeah, sip. You sip, you appreciate the flavor of the wine. You try and have one that complements the meal, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whereas our a lot of people over here would drink wine just to get drunk. Like they just down yeah, it so, in, so, almost like this chili contest thing of like how I drunk mean, can we possibly get i'm not if, saying if, everybody yeah if we if, if we were to, to 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 pass beyond the the cliche i think we would be drunk by the end of the meal not at a young age obviously just as an adult but yes the approach seems to be leaning more towards moderation right now i think that is because you have you've got a culture where you're brought up with that thing around all the time now, look, I'm not saying that Britain's, in terms of like Chile, eating is, is one of the big nations or whatever. However, I think given that our sort of, we don't really have a cuisine of our own. We do. There are some things, but Indian food is bigger. It's the quintessential British meal almost, right? Mm-hmm. Ev- there, there's an Indian takeaway on almost every street in the UK. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a, it's a big deal. And our national dish is, is, is uh, chicken tikka masala. Yes. Right? Brilliant. So, I think the first time I had a curry, I was four, and they're nearly always with, spice with spice with spice. Yeah, absolutely. 
A spicy chili. You you had a spicy curry at four. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I've got a, a, a friend of mine. Did you, who, did you who, cry? No. All right. If you as a kid and you eat well, that and it's like, oh wow, it's a bit. You know, they're not they're not gonna yeah. they're not gonna give me a madras or a, you know a vindaloo yeah, yeah, or something yeah, yeah, as, yeah. as the first oh, curry. God, be, but yeah, that would be. But um, it's an introduction to chili in fact just recently a friend of mine who uh has, has just had a kid sort of she's about a year old now and he's trying her out with different foods and things and we were having something that was very mildly spicy and he let her have a bit to see what her reaction mm-hmm. would be whether she you know whether she would spit yeah. it out or whatever she turns red or- no reaction whatsoever totally fine with it okay, didn't cool. d- it didn't flinch wanted a bit didn't more bother was absolutely fine so i think it's okay. one of those things that you introduce it early on mm-hmm. and then you don't abuse it when you get older yeah that that, that could that could be the problem uh, well, Can I say, there's always I exceptions say, yeah. to the rule i, re- which, I remember i remember going to a Sichuanese restaurant once and uh, i mm-hmm. ordered the dandan noodles oh the best that's supposedly if you go to a Sichuanese restaurant, the test of whether it's any good or not is how good the dandan noodles are. I've heard that before. Oh, I mean, I mean that that's amazing. Yeah, go on. So it comes out, you know, it's like kind of almost ramen style in that it's like oh, it's, it's, it's almost a, a soup, but yes. there there is like a centimeter layer of chili oil on the ah. top of this thing, and I am eating it, and about halfway through it, my friends had all <laughs> stopped eating. And we're all looking at me, and they were like, Josh, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, no, it's, it's really tasty. It's really tasty. And they were like, you look a mess. You look an absolute mess because I was crying, and there's <laughs> snot coming out of my nose. I was sweating. I'd taken my jumper oh, off. These there's, a big, yeah. there's a big V of sweat on my chest, just like where, you know, like... I'm Man, you're having really a hot. moment. I'm having a moment. I'm high. I'd totally forgotten where I was. You know, the walls were shimmering. It was all going off. And um, all hell man, broke loose. I but everybody's like, just stop eating it. And I was like, I can't. It's too tasty. It's too good. It was really. It was. It was not only spicy, but, but also very tasty. Well, I, I, I've, got, I've got a slight problem with chili oil. I, I love chili oil, but there's there's also oil in chili oil. Yeah, and just a, a layer, like like a centimeter of oil on any dish is just like ugh. like so, something something happening with the Sichuan chili oil. Because you said you, you you were just in tears and in sweat and the nose and the thing. But also, Sichuan chili oil has um, Sichuan peppercorns. Yes. So it's numbing. 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 It's yeah, numbing, yeah. exactly. So, so you probably had your, your tongue hanging like a on dog. the side of your... Yeah, I mean, not like a dog, but yeah, hanging on the side <laughs> of your mouth. It probably was. And, 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 I was and, doing and so, that to try and cool down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so you, at, I'm, I'm sure that at some point you, you can't feel anything with this because it's so tingling, it's so numbing that you could eat basically anything. I'm, yeah. I'm a big, I'm, I'm a big fan. So I had a, sort of a similar dish in the UK, in London, close to King's Cross. I don't know if that's a good or a bad sign, but it's a Sichuanese restaurant, and I had some sort of a mapo tofu, but mm-hmm. I was also swimming in chili oil. Yeah. I loved it, but not to the extent that you described. The, the experience I had was more like I had a few, you know, bites and a, a few spoonful enjoying. And then I started feeling something which you can experience if you're having, for example, a, a shower that is way too hot. At some point, instead of hot, your sensors go bonkers and you start feeling cold. Hmm. Have you ever felt that in the shower? No, I've had it the other way. I've been in very, very cold water, and it, it was so cold, it felt hot. It's the exact same thing. The sensors are just... Um, it's at the extremes, so they can't... They're, they're yeah. sort of like... It, it's extreme They're something. saturating. Don't know whether it's hot or cold, but it's and, and, not and that's, good. That's the vibe I had. So I, I was eating and eating more, more spoons and spoons of that, of that mapo tofu, and at some point, it felt like I had a mint gum. I was like, yeah, I, okay, it's like my cooling mouth was, almost. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, it was yeah, cooling, yeah, yeah. and I was just like, I think I'm fine with this. this. I, I'm perfectly fine. I like, like it very much. You've been to the dentist. <laughs> I was just ready to accept anything else. It's just weird. So it wasn't just it, it wasn't that much of a 
pleasing experience, I must say. I never went back to this restaurant. You know, too much oil, too much heat. I haven't experienced enough actual real Sichuanese food to know this, but I think there have been times when I've had that kind of really hot chili oil sort of thing where it's not necessarily about the flavor of the chili. There are lots mm-hmm. of flavors in there, but it's mainly like garlic or ginger or something yes. like that. Yes. Um, but chili is just there for the heat. That I almost feel like it's for me. It's too hot. It's it seems like an abuse of the mm-hmm. of the chili by that point. It's like it's so overpowering that it it stops being about the, the 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 flavor of the thing. It's interesting though because I think that leads to like every country seems to have its own take on chili, its own way of of presenting it. So I made a few trips to Africa and uh, there I had a chat with a cook and I said, "Why is that food so spicy?" Because we are, we were having something very spicy and he said. Because of the heat, no, because of the, 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 the overall temperature, if it's not spicy enough, there's no way you would have appetite for it. Wow. And I was just like, wow. And, and then it made some sense because I was eating the thing. I had appetite for, for food, even though it was like 40 degrees Celsius out there. So it was just so damn hot. But the chili kept me going somehow. Man, that's interesting because, you know, in, in, in the Sichuan province, it's absolutely freezing and it's really humid it's like mm-hmm. cold and damp a lot or mm-hmm. at least that's what i've heard that they're the reason that they love the chili is because it's almost like bringing life back into their bones yeah through through imbibing that sort of thing so, so it's interesting the, that, yeah. that that it has a, an effect on both ends <laughs> of the spectrum yeah but from these two comments from these two observations i'm getting that people are just inventing whatever stupid excuse to eat they chilies. can't be eating chilies it sounds like it <laughs> It sounds like it. Let me ask you about um, how much experience have you had with sort of Mexican food in terms of the variety of chilies and the way that yeah. they're used? I think that that's the field that I need to explore to well, solve the problem. Here's the thing. You, you know, when you think about like a food, there's always a region where it, is, it originates from and they always have the most variety of that particular thing, mm-hmm. wh- whatever mm-hmm. it might be. Um, and originally chilies come from Mexico. So... The way that they get used, the different varieties that they grow, the mm-hmm. way that they're dried or smoked or aged or turned into different salsas or whatever. There are things that... And, and I feel like with Mexican food, because I've never actually been to Mexico, okay? Mm-hmm. I've just done a lot of reading on it. I've sort of eaten at a few hopefully authentic-ish Mexican places. Um, you're, you're, you're like a... a, a I'm trying... A meeb? A, Amoeb, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you would amoeb. call it that. Yeah, amoeb. Uh, just for clarification for anybody, a weeb, let me get this right. A weeb is sort yeah. of a, a Westerner who's obsessed with Japanese culture. Yeah, I think so. You could call me the same thing for Mexican food. Okay, Absolutely, cool. yeah. Um, I'm obsessed by it. And actually, in a way, my inability to get there yeah. has probably driven my curiosity more. I'd love to go. I'd love to go to like Oaxaca one day. Or, oh, Oaxaca, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be the, the place for, 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 for like. That's yeah, their yeah. foodie region. That, I think that's yeah, that, yeah, their, yeah. their foodie version region. of like. Ah, oh, I would Provence love to, go, to get there. That's their, like, that's their version of that. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, okay, just on a, on a simple thing, like, so yeah. I've ordered from uh, online the, a lot of what the you, dried what, what, Mexican yeah. chilies, and they're okay. used, okay. their primary function not really being about the heat. In fact, I've experimented with making. Uh, a salsa, like a a, um, a a sort of cooked and and ground down salsa, that has three different types of chili in it, and it's barely spicy at all. Oh wow! Okay. But what it brings okay, to it is this sort of like leathery, raisiny, um, mm. like sort of fruity dark, clubhouse dark, vibe. Exactly. Le- yeah. yeah. Okay. It has this real sort of. Or it's, I would say smoky, but the the ones I'm talking about aren't even smoked. Yeah, I can sense the vibe, that that, that slow-cooked attitude. It, uh, yeah, and it adds a real depth to, to, to you know, things that you, you're cooking. But they're, they're from, like, these big chilies that are almost, I guess, like, point, they almost would, would look like pointed bell peppers. Okay, so I'm familiar with these. They're called poblanos, I think. So when they're so when are, are these the poblanos the big ones? Uh, poblanos are, are the uh, and someone's probably going to correct me on this, but as far as I'm aware, they're the kind of the the, the big, very mild green chilies uh, okay. that is eaten in a lot of Mexican food. They use them like to stuff with cheese and uh, and other things like that. Okay. But when they're then dried, they're called anchos. Okay, okay and so there's the another name changes as they're dried. Okay, and there's another form 
of them where they're allowed to age on the vine or the tree or whatever. Okay. Um, and then they're dried and they're called mulattoes, which which are slightly spicier and they're a bit darker and a bit richer. S- and s- s- say the last name again. Mulatto. M u l a t o. When they're aging on 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 the tree on the I think on, it, on, it, on, it's, on the it's a pub, it's a poblano that's been allowed to go past its green stage and get riper on the vine before being dried. Okay, understood. Yeah, I, I, can, I can sense that I'm definitely lacking knowledge when it comes to chill. That could be an exit strategy for me. Not exactly an exit strategy, but that could be a, a way for me to be more educated, be more aware, open my mind to not only like basic chili sauce that I've got there, but so you you're basically implying that there's no going back to no chili zone i, I think can't so. go Look, back man, the only, it, the only way be... is to accept what is and be more aware and diversify my chili intake let me give you a much simpler analogy right go on you say to somebody who's never had salt on their food before <sighs> right you go here's some salt now oh, they, that's, they've gone to the age of 25 they've never eaten anything with salt you give them some salt and they go oh my god <laughs> i cannot believe i've been eating Such without this stuff analogy. for this long right now obviously there's not there, there is a big variety of different salts i would say there's a much yeah. wider variety of types of chili and its implementation i think so but you might yeah. when you first discover salt go mad on it for a bit and then you start to realize Man, it's making me really thirsty. I don't feel good when I have this much of it. There's, there's, anyway, and then you'd level off and then you get to a stage culturally where you're aware you don't need to be having that much. A little bit of this can go a long way. Sometimes you might want to blow out with this thing, but treat it with respect and it will make everything better. I feel like chili's a little bit like that. You can try different varieties of it, but also... Don't go too mad with it. In a way, almost maybe back to... The, well, not... I was, would say the French approach, but it's not the French approach because you're saying that there's, there's no chilli in the food whatsoever. It's just a big miss on, on, on an important flavour, on an important taste experience. And I feel like, no, I mean, the, 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 the French thing is is one, but I, I can understand what you're you're saying. I, I like it. I think it's a, it's a... This is the... this is You know what? You're, you're helping me here, I think. Yeah. I think so. And I, c- can I suggest something to, to wrap up this episode? Yeah, yeah. Why don't you, and I'm just not pushing because you're a very good editor. If you could stay in the editing world, that would be best. <laughs> but another option, if ever in life you, you want to have a change, why don't you open a virtual um, doctor cabinet somehow? A virtual doctor room online, like yeah. Dr. Chili or jo- Joshua. Online chili uh, therapist. Online chili therapist, exactly. And, and you just... You know, you, you you're just trying to help people with their addiction with chilies. It's not a big addiction, as we have, as we as we've mentioned in this episode. It's not a serious one. It's not a heavy, heavy one. But still, I like that. I wouldn't be against you know spending a few bucks to get the right advice on how I could how solve, to manage your chili you know? addiction. Yeah. I mean, look, that I'm nice. more than willing to offer my services if there's anybody out there that would uh, like to know well, more about it. Warning. Simply visit uh, Joshua's Chili Therapy dot co dot UK and uh, and use the promo code <laughs> Alex. <laughs> yeah, and the other uh, the other service that I offer is if you're scared of chilies, I offer uh, you know an exposure therapy where we slowly build you up to the ability that's to amazing. eat at a, a normal level of chilies. That that's a career plan right here. Mm. I could do that. The chili doctor, I like that. The chili doctor, man. I'm going I'm going to wrap up this one. Thank you very much for your help on this. Chili doctor, we catch up in the next one, okay? <laughs> P- people are fun. just going to call you Chili doctor. Chili doctor from now on. I'm into that. What I do you like think? It. It's not a bad nickname. The Chili I, doctor. I could be the Chili doctor. I would say Especially it's more, if yeah. I get to be called a doctor without having to do a PhD. Why yeah, why but, the hell not? Yeah, but the Chili doctor if if it were to be a Marvel character, it would definitely be an evil one. It would be a it would be a bad guy, the chili ah, doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I could, if I put doctor. a white lab coat on, then people will trust me. They shouldn't, but they will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man, so much. All right, have a good one, man. Have a good one. Bye, bye.